Good morning, and thank you for being with us. My name is Maher Nasser. I'm the director of the Outreach Division in the UN Department of Public Information. I'm very proud to be here with this amazing panel to launch, or this is a pre-launch. In, in 12 o'clock, please join hashtag youth2030, the launch of the UN system youth strategy. So we've lost a bit of time. I'm going to hand over to Jay so you can introduce the panel and lead the discussion. And then you have to be we know we're at 12. <laughs> thank you so much, Maher. And thank you also for your support to, to all of us uh, advancing the youth agenda here at the UN. Good morning, everyone. Sorry for the messy hair. I just came from the riverside. Um, uh, so it is an incredible day for young people and for the United Nations equally, because we are making history today. The United Nations is launching a system-wide strategy to meaningfully engage young people and work better with and for young people. Uh, so the strategy that I was tasked to lead on has been developed with inputs from all system-wide UN agencies and also from youth organizations, primarily from the Major Group for Children and Youth and the International Coordination Mechanism for Youth Organizations. You will see more this, about the strategy when the Secretary General launches it in less than 30 minutes. Uh, but I'll give you a little snapshot. So the strategy aims to reset and reorient the UN system's work for young people. So we are trying to shake the foundations of the United Nations a little bit to be more inclusive, to be more open, to make our decision-making tables a little bit bigger, to accommodate the voices of young people from all parts of the world. So the UN aspires to be a leadership example, an accountability example, an innovation pioneer, and, um, and a home for young people from all parts of the world. And we also have five thematic areas Areas. Those are advancing the advocacy and amplifying youth voices at the UN, promoting peaceful, just societies, young people in humanitarian action, young people's access to education, health care, decent job opportunities, uh, but also most importantly, young people's human rights, civic and political participation. So we are so thrilled to launch the youth strategy today. And with me here, I have an amazing panel. Natalia Kamnem, the executive director of UNFPA, who has been leading on the youth agenda, uh, both UNFPA as an organization, but also personally Natalia's commitment to youth issues has been so inspiring. We have the prime minister of Denmark, who has been another champion for, for youth issues, young people's agenda at the UN. Uh, Denmark has uh, a, a track record of um, meaningful youth participation at the UN through the youth delegate program, through the voluntary national reviews that are presently uh, presented to the UN by ministers and young people alike. And we have Burak Dole uh, in the corner, who is a young leader for sustainable development. He has an amazing initiative that you'll hear more about in a bit. And then Miao Wang, who is a champion of Earth from UN Environment. She's one of the young champs for Earth. Um, and we are so happy to have her here today with us. So let me uh, give my first question to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, as I said, Denmark has been championing the youth agenda here at the United Nations and at an international level. But we also know that nationally you invest a lot on young people. Why are young people important to Denmark and why are you making these investments? What is your commitment to the UN's youth strategy? Well, thank you. I will be very brief, given the time. Uh, first of all, I want to commend you for this uh, strategy and the work you have been done. Uh, I mean, it's not very difficult to answer that question, is it? Because it's all about the future. And right now, we are, we are facing the largest uh, youth generation in the history of the world. Uh, and I had the honor to, uh, to, uh, to chair the UN Summit three years ago, where we adopted the SDGs. And for me, this is basically a contract between generations and between regions and between uh, genders and if we should fulfill this contract it's not something we can do for the youngsters it must be done by the youngsters so i mean there's no way we can achieve the sdgs if, if we do not engage the next generation so for me it's an easy answer to uh, a question to answer and and that's why we want to be supportive and i'm looking forward to announcing uh, even uh, more support from, from Denmark uh, at the next uh, program at our schedule today. 
Thank you very much, Prime Minister Rasmussen. We really hope that other member states will also follow the lead of Denmark and, and, and step up their uh, work for young people. Natalia, I know you always want to give young people the priority, so I'm just going to jump right into Burak, because he is an amazing young leader who is proving that young people are not the leaders of the future, but young people are the leaders of today. Burak, why don't you tell us a little bit about your innovation, how you use entrepreneurship as a tool for peace building. I don't think anyone has done that before. So basically um, what we do is we use entrepreneurship for peace building as you said and we do that by creating the intercommunal entrepreneurship ecosystem. So especially in Cyprus this is something we're testing now. So there's two separated communities and we're trying to bring them together, the unemployed people and small businesses to create partnerships and to have dialogue through business for peace. Wonderful. Natalia, what is UNFPA's new commitment to youth? Jayatma, this is a wonderful occasion. Thank you so much, Prime Minister and Denmark, for your leadership uh, across the board, including this really important issue of youth. Youth is the U in UNFPA. The reason that we say that is that a quarter of the world's population, I believe, is in very good hands if young people are equipped with information and data to help shape policy, which is going to affect the theme of leaving no one left behind, which is what the Sustainable Development Goals are all about. So how do we find someone who is in danger of being left behind? I'm disabled, I live in an island community, I've been ravaged by earthquake, conflict, whatever it is. For you guys to figure that out, our commitment is to ensure that there is data available to you for evidence, and also that we support the sexual and reproductive health and rights of everyone, in particular, the girls of the world. We want them to know that knowing your body is protective, but it also leads to a healthy sexuality, which means that girls can partic participate equally with the support of boys. Whoops, okay, I guess. Uh. <laughs> yes. So that means that the event has started, which means I should probably be there right now. Uh, but I'm going to introduce Miao, who is a diver, who is working on conservation and biodiversity. Miao, I'm going to ask you to explain what you are doing as a young person for our environment, for our climate, and I'm going to leave the rest of the panel in the very able hands of Maher Nasser. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, hello everyone, I'm Miao and I'm the founder of Better Blue. And actually Better Blue is a, con uh, is a network constructed by divers. So we are trying to explore the world that we can't see in the current moment through diving and through scuba diving. And we are quite a young community because the majority of the divers in China currently, the time range is from 19 to 35. So you can see that it's a very young community. And we feel that whenever, uh, when we have the time to, uh, when we have the capacity to explore the ocean, we also have the obligation to tell people what is going on underwater. Because we are not only witness the beauty of the ocean, we also witness the degradation of this ecosystem. And there is one scientist that actually there is no water, no life, and no blue, no green. So everyone should know that we should protect this plan, uh, blue planet, and also we should, can, uh, we should contribute to the ocean conservation, no matter whether you are living in coastal area or not, because there, that's where all the life begins. Well, thank, thank you. So, Prime Minister, you've heard two young people, and I think Denmark's commitment and your support for the Office of the Youth Envoy and, and the Youth Agenda in general, how can we ensure that other countries and other governments step up to the same level that your government has taken to bring in youth to the table and not just talk about them, but actually include them? Well, I think basically by leading by example, I think that's what we can do. I'm, I, I feel very optimistic uh, having listened to you, uh, even though the intervention was very limited due to time. And I think uh, if you walk around, you will see lots of very nice uh, example of uh, youngsters making a real difference. And I echo what was said earlier, that this is not only future leaders, this is uh, someone who can lead today. Uh, and we simply have had that tradition in my country for many years. Um, 
youngsters participate in general elections and the run for election. We just have most recently municipality elections and a lot of young people were elected. Um, in 1985, I remember, we had the youth year, um, and uh, it was exactly the, the year I was elected for municipality, um, uh, for my local municipality. And it was due to the UN uh, youth year, uh, because all the parties in Denmark, they simply, you know, giving this pressure from the world community, looked around, we need at least one youngster, uh, at our list. So I was selected the young candidate for my party and I was elected. So, uh, I mean, and I think we just need more of that. So I think we should lead by example. Thank you. Natalia, I think when we talk about gender equality and I think countries where they have actually allocated quotas for women have done more than any other country in, in ensuring that it, at least in the elected parliaments there's some equality. Do you think there is space, politically speaking, also for an agenda for youth in, in, in the political process? Absolutely. I not only think that there's room, I think young people are inviting themselves to the table and making themselves part of the circle. And that is why I'm uh, very, very aware that where young people can have the confidence that you should speak and that you should speak on behalf of equality. Young people believe in peace. Young people are interested in fairness. This is going to broaden the spectrum for everyone. I think it's so interesting that the Prime Minister had the confidence to, young, to run as a young person. And I also feel that a young girl can lead in her community. You might not be the mayor, but there are a lot of things that you can do in terms of changing reality. So absolutely, I think we have to support young people in your role as leaders. And a lot of that means equipping you so that when you speak, you speak based on evidence. You've been able to interview people who you are going to represent. And that's part of the excitement of spotlighting this issue here at the United Nations. Youth 2030 says that the only way we can truly get the institutions, the justice, the spectrum of things that we need, as was spoken to by you guys, is to make sure that the youth generation has their place. Thank you, and I understand Prime Minister, you need to leave to, to catch the event, but maybe I'll ask maybe Barak to give us a concrete example of one of the things in entrepreneurship that you did and how it contributed to promoting peace between the two communities. So basically it's, um, it's a mix of different initiatives that it makes the whole thing work. So when you look at um, peace building initiatives in the post-conflict regions, usually they're not sustainable in terms of creating a dialogue. They're daily events or week-long events and that kind of stuff. So when you use entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs are people who's, who are always looking for opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we bring these people together, especially in a small island where it's surrounded by water, and they're always going to look for an opportunity, no matter what it is. So we do that by creating networking between people. We give mentorship to people. We train people to start new businesses, so and then we can join them. Mm -hmm. And we do this through digital and physical initiatives. Well, thank you, thank you very much. I know that we, we had two more minutes to, to go, but the event is starting. As you can see on the screen there, we invite all of you to tune in. Hashtag Youth2030, Youth Matter, Youth Can Achieve the SDGs. And I think we need you all to tune in. Please, thank you very much. Maybe Miao, you want to have to say something, a last word before we, we end this section? And then we have to follow up the actual launch of the strategy. Okay, sure. Uh, I guess a majority of people here are like me that I actually we are believing that all the creatures in the world are actually entitled to share this planet together with us, not only the human people uh, are actually the, the, the master of the world. So I, I really call for like everyone can concern and also care about our ocean system, not only to the land. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's, this morning I looked and hashtag Unga was trending, the number one trending this uh, morning. Maybe if you challenge for you, make hashtag youth2030 tr be the number one in the next 30 minutes. And for, don't forget hashtag SDG Live. So till next section, I think now we tune into the actual launch. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank